Hello, my name is Curtis DeGoyer. I work as an agronomist here at Borgo Industries, along with uh, fellow agronomist Jeff Strukoff and Al Lefebvre. So what I'm gonna go through here today is a bit about what we do on the Borgo Research Farm in regards to our trials. So in general, what we have out here, we have about 114 different trials where we're playing around with different drills, openers, and fertilizer placement. All of our treatments out here are all 400 feet long by 30 feet wide. We do plant stand checks where we take three different areas in each treatment and we do about a five foot square in each three and then combine or average out our plant stands. For yield, we'll take a 25 foot swather, cut down the center according to when it's ready to be swathed and then come in with the combine at the proper time and we'll measure each each load and dump into a, a way wagon. We take a sample out of every single strip and we send it away to the elevator so that we can assess the, the dockage and the moisture and zero it out so we can just look at our, at our actual yield. We also do this in wheat where we'll take the protein into consideration as well. So out here for 2020, uh, if you weren't able to make it, I, we've been doing lots of trials out here, or lots of tours. So we wanted to give you a bit of a virtual tour. What we're doing in this field, we've seeded on May 19th and 20th. Uh, the canola at a seeding rate of 4.5 miles an hour. The variety of seed that we're using is an Invigor 345 PC, seed size D. So that recommendation is to seed at 5.6 pounds per acre to attain that 10 seeds per square foot. Our total fertility out here is 140 pounds of actual N, 50 pounds of actual P, and 10 pounds of K. We broadcast the sulfur in the fall using a combined product of, of ammonium sulfate and elemental sulfur to reach a target of about 30 pounds per acre. The land that we're on is a gray wooded soil. So this type of soil is inherently low in phosphorus and potassium. So we can see some of the, the soil tests are showing organic matter of about 4.8%. Our pH levels are right in the middle, about 7.5. We had about 15 pounds of, of N. We do a double depth phosphorus test. We're in zero to six, we're about five parts per million PPM. And the six to 24 was about two parts per million. Our potash or potassium out here is about 140 pounds and our sulfur is about 40 pounds. The different drills that we're using out here are a leading 7550 Borgo tank with triple shoot capabilities. We also have a 30 foot 3320 PLX drill with mid row banders. So that's the Paralink Extreme with mid rows. That drill also has the air planter option. So we can singulate using that hole drill. Our second drill is a 3320 with the Paralink single, the PLS opener, with mid-row banders and that drill we can convert into the PLD, the Paralink dual knife opener with mid-row banders giving us triple shoot capability. So in this trial out here what we're looking at is our 12 inch spaced PLD, the Paralink dual knife system. This specific treatment has no phosphorus or no potassium. So it has 140 pounds of actual N going down the sideband. The seed on its own at 5.6 pounds per acre and no other starter nutrients. In this treatment, we're looking at a, again our 12 inch spaced Paralink dual knife. Uh, and in this one, we're putting down 140 pounds of actual N down the sideband. Uh, but we're also doing, and this one is putting down 50 pounds of actual P and 10 pounds of actual K. 
The way that we've organized the placement on this is we're putting 15 pounds of pea in with the seed row. The other 35 pounds is in the side band with that 140 pounds of N along with that 10 pounds of K. So a, a split application of phosphorus in this treatment. So in this treatment, again, our, our Paralink dual knife on 12 inch spacing, we're putting down 140 pounds of actual N, 50 pounds of actual P, and 10 pounds of K. So all the fertility in this treatment is going down the side band with the nitrogen. So the seed is on its own, and all 140N, 50P, 10K is all in the sideband. So to give a bit of an explanation of what we think is going on out here, we just looked at the three different strips, all with the same drill, the PLD opener on 12 inch spacing. That's the dual knife. On that first one we showed you, with no FOSS or K at all, uh, just 140 pounds of N uh, down the sideband and the seed alone. When we look at the, the next strip here that I'm, I'm currently standing in, uh, what we see here is a bit more uh, growth, a little bit more vigor on, on, in the canola. So this one has 15 pounds of actual P in the seed row, with the other 35 pounds in the sideband with the 10 pounds of K, along with that, all that nitrogen, that bulk of our nitrogen uh, is, is there as well. When we move to this third one, we're putting down the same fertility package as the one I was standing in, but we can kind of see there's a bit of a reduction in, in the development of the plants. And so this one has the seed on its own. All of the phosphorus and all of the potash is in the sideband with that 140 pounds of N. So when we kind of look out there, what we've been noticing is that this treatment was actually looking like the treatment where we had no phosphorus or K at all. And so what's happening out here is a term uh, that's been referred to as hot banding. And what's happening in that is we have that bulk of, of nitrogen in the form of urea, and as it's changing into a plant available form, into a nitrate, pH levels are, are going up and down, uh, it's taking in moisture, and it's really unfavorable conditions for root development. And so when you have an immobile nutrient like phosphorus, the roots just can't physically penetrate into that band. And so what we see is a bit of a delay in that, in that starter fertilizer uptake. And so it, it, it looks closer to where we put no FOSS or K at all. So that's why when we're, when we're looking at the treatment next that is more lush, that little bit of starter P right in the seed, uh, when you have that bulk of nitrogen in the sideband, uh, can be a benefit. When we look more into the, into the plant stands out here on, on these three particular uh, treatments, uh, they range between 4.5 to 5 plants a square foot. And so again, that's with the nitrogen in the sideband uh, relatively close to the seed. So in this treatment we're looking at right now, uh, it was seeded with the same opener that we previously went through. So that's the Paralink dual knife on 12 inch spacing, but now we've added on the mid row banding system. So it's a triple shoot configuration. What we've done in, in this particular treatment, uh, the same fertility as the last ones, where we're putting down 140 pounds of N, but now it's going down the mid row, not the side band. This treatment has no FOSS or K in it at all. Uh, so just the seed on its own in the seed row, nothing going down the side band knife, and all the nitrogen's out in the mid row. In this one, we've now added FOSS and K into the, into the treatment. So for placement, we're doing a split placement of phosphorus. So we're putting 15 pounds of actual in with the seed row. Then in the sideband, we're putting 35 pounds of P along with the 10K. And then out in the mid row, we have our bulk of our nitrogen uh, to make up that 140 pounds of N. So this treatment, again, the, the Paralink, the dual knife, with mid-row banders. Uh, in, in this treatment, we're putting down that 50 pounds of P and 10 pounds of K is all going down the sideband. So you have the seed on its own, the P and K in the sideband, and then the rest of the, the, the bulk of the nitrogen is down in the mid-row. 
So to explain what's going on out here and, and the different treatments, uh, you can see on the, on the first one we showed you uh, just the, the uptake uh, of phosphorus or what the crop will look like if we don't have any phosphorus or, or potassium at all. Uh, we can see it's just a little bit delayed in, in the plant maturity. When we do add phosphorus and potassium into the system, uh, and this one that I'm standing in right now, this is the, this is the split. So we're putting that little bit of phosphorus in with the seed row and the rest is out in the, in the side band with the potassium, bulk of the nitrogen in, in the mid row. And we can see that there's a, a bump in uh, um, plant development over putting no phos at all. And of course, then we jump over to, to this treatment where all the phos and all the K is into the side band and the bulk of the nitrogen's in the mid row. And the seed is able to just be on its, be on its own. When we're looking at the, the plant stands out here, uh, this range between all three from about 8.3 plants a square foot to about 8.7 plants a square foot. There was really no noticeable difference between where all the P was in the sideband versus where we had that split. In years previous, we've, we've actually seen a slight reduction in plant stand when we've added even that small amount of phosphorus into the seed row. And even though phosphorus, uh, in this case it's 1152, has a lower salt content than most other fertilizers, uh, we had seen in the past where just that, just that little bit kind of bumped down our, our plant stand. And if you think about a prill of, of phosphorus versus a little canola seed, if they're fighting over the, a little bit of moisture, the same moisture, you'll, you'll, you'll find that the phosphorus prill will win out every time. All that phosphorus and all that potash in with that nitrogen in the sideband just can't uptake, but we just move that nitrogen away. And then now you can see that there's no problem having uptake of phosphorus uh, in the sideband and that potash because it doesn't have to fight through that bulk of nitrogen. So this treatment, uh, what we've done in, in, in this one is we've used our, our 10 inch spaced Paralink single knife drill with mid row banders. So this would be considered more of our, our typical, our, our most typical seeding unit. Uh, in this particular treatment, we haven't put any phosphorus or potash down. So the seed is going in the seed row in the single knife and the bulk of the nitrogen is going in the mid row. So this treatment, we're again using our 10 inch space Paralink single knife with mid row banders. But now we've added and introduced phosphorus into, into the equation here. So what we're doing is putting 15 pounds of actual P as 1152 going into the seed row with the seed, the other 35 pounds of P out into the mid row. So the goal here is to be able to put down enough phosphorus to at least maintain uh, the amount that is coming out with the grain at harvest time, but yet not pushing the rates into the seed row. We just find that that 15 pounds of actual uh, is a nice number as far as getting a pop-up effect from the crop. So when we look next to the one I uh, just showed you where we have no phosphorus at all in it, we can see that there's a, there's a difference in, in plant development where the crop with no phos at all is a bit delayed but when we added just that 15 pounds of actual, we see a, a little bit of up, uptick in the plant development. So that extra phosphorus out in the mid row will be accessed a little bit later in the season and a little bit closer to when that crop is at the bolting stage and when there's a, a large, large uptake of nutrients needed by the crop. So we've added phosphorus in our last treatment, and now we're gonna bring in a little bit of potash. So 10 pounds of actual, and in this treatment, we're putting that into the seed row with that 15 pounds of phosphorus. So in the seed row, we have the seed, 15 pounds of P, and 10 pounds of K. Out in the mid row, we have that remainder of 140 pounds of N, and the 35 pounds of P. So this treatment, 10 inch spaced, Paralink single knife with mid row banders. We've added in the, the phosphorus, the potash into the seed row. In this treatment, we're playing around with, let's move that, that potash out of the seed row and into the mid row band. So we have the seed with 15 pounds of actual P, 
And then in the mid row, we have 35 pounds of P, 10 pounds of K, and then we have the remainder of the, of the 140 pounds of nitrogen. We had showed you before where we put the 15 pounds of, of actual P in the seed row. This particular treatment, we're, putting, we're cutting our, our seed place FOSS down to only four pounds of actual in the seed row, just to see how low we can go, uh, but still get that little pop-up effect, but not have to put too much in the seed row uh, to compete for moisture with that canola seed. So four pounds in the seed row, the remaining 46 pounds of P and 10K in the mid row with the bulk of the 140 pounds of nitrogen. So if we compare these two together, this is the 15 pounds of actual P in the seed row versus the four over there. We see a slight, slight um, plant development with the 15 pounds of actual P. So we may have gotten a little bit low with the, with the four pounds in the seed row, but when we compare over to a, a treatment we'll talk about right away here, um, we can see that in this treatment, we actually have, we actually have no phosphorus in it at all. So this, even with a small amount of 4P in the seed row, seems to have a bit of a pop-up effect over, over no P at all. So this treatment I'm standing in right now is a 12 inch spaced Paralink single knife with mid-row banders. So this one we're, we're looking at no FOSS or K at all in it, just the seed on its own in the single knife and 140 pounds of N out in the mid-row. In this one we're, we've now introduced some, some phosphorus and, and potash where we've taken that 15 pounds of actual P put it in the seed row, the other 35 pounds of P out in the mid row, along with the 10 pounds of K, with the remainder of the 140 pounds of, of actual N. So when we compare with this one to where we had no phosphorus at all, we can see some, some differences out here as far as plant development, where that 15 actual P in the seed row uh, has definitely uh, shown a bit of a pop-up effect. And that extra 35 pounds of, of pea out in the mid row will be accessed a little bit later in the season. We wanted to bring this treatment in versus our 10 inch Paralink single knife opener just to see if there's a difference between 12 inch and 10 inch in canola. So our goal is to get the results, plant stands and the yield from all of these different trials that we're doing and then we'll have them posted onto our Borgo website borgo.com and look for the agronomy tab. You should see these results coming out this upcoming winter where you can take a look at what we did and the results from it.